G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do something a little bit more fun today, although I have been doing a lot of fun things lately, haven't I? Now, crushed velvet. I've been doing the crushed velvet for ooh, quite a long time now, and there's a lot of people doing it now, so I'm going to revisit because it's been a while since I've done one. This is my big tray I did. <laughs> Um, and I just call it crushed velvet because I think it looks like fabric, but it's flat on top, like it's not textured, it's flat. So anyway, I'm going to do something like that, but <clears throat> a bit different, as usual. <laughs> so I have got this. It's, uh, it's cellophane, and I got a package of these. Now these are cellophane party bags, Okay. That's what it is. It's just a party bag. And I've cut it up. I used the other bit sometime. I don't know when, but I've used it sometime. So that's like half a party bag there. Let's move that out of the way. So instead of just using normal cling wrap or a plastic bag, um, I'm going to go with something a little bit iridescent and see if I can get a really pretty effect. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going it, to, it should fit. It's about the right size. It'll fit. So that's what I'm going to do. Make sure you put it down on a clean surface. <laughs> right, so I've got my resin. I'll put my glove back on now. I've got my resin. I don't want to fill this all the way. So um, I just made up 100 grams of A and 43 grams of B in the Platinum 360 Plus. This is just one of those cheap heart molds from um, Amazon. So I wanted something a little bit different in shape. So this will do. I think it'll look pretty. Okay, so I'm going to squirt. There I'm just going to squirt my mould with some 100% alcohol. Mainly along the edges there, just to stop the bubbles clinging to the edges. So I wasn't sure how much to, to make up. I might keep the rest. Got another little. I've got to top coat my little. Um, I've got to make some black top coats for my petri crystal. So that may be enough. Because so I'm not sure if I want to like top coat this or not. How deep's that? Yeah, a little bit more. Probably about half full. What do you reckon? Oh no, let's just let's just do it. I don't think I'm gonna to top coat it. Let's just put the whole thing in. Ah, oh, indecisive, indecisive. Because I want it to be like when I showed you that um tray just before, it had a black background. Um I made the crushed velvet and then I dusted it with chameleon and then um I put a black background on it. That one is in my YouTube playlists if anybody wants to see that one um, but this one because I want it to be more iridescent and kind of transparent I think I'm just going to put the plastic on and it'll just be I may do clear on the back just so that it's flat but we'll see we'll see what happens put a little torch for bubbles I might just let that sit for a minute actually because I can see some little micro bubbles there. Now I don't mind torching this, and eh, not torching, <laughs> spraying it because um, it, it's just going to be the back. But I can see a few little bubbly boos in there. Um, let's have a look. I'll go around with my little silicone brush. Just around the edges. It is really hard to do this crushed velvet technique without getting bubbles. Um, but we'll, we'll have another go at it, hey? And see how we go. But I think what I'll do is I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to put you on pause. I'm just going to wait for a, a five minutes or so. Um, a, to let the bubbles come up and then I can pop them and B, just for the resin to thicken a little bit so that when I put this 
plastic on. Um, it just won't be so oozy <laughs> and runny and thin, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back in five or so minutes and then we'll put the, the plastic on. I don't know if it's got a top or a, a bottom. This side, this side kind of looks more shiny to me. So I think I'll put this side down. All right, see you soon. Right, so it's been a few minutes. Now I'm just going to check my mold for bubbles. Now this is just a torch or flashlight. And I'm going to go around and have a little look. There's one. Sometimes you can't really see them as much with the naked eye. I find if I shine a torch on them, I can see the bubbles better and then I can just get them out with the toothpick or pop them with the torch. So yeah, there you go. A little, a little trick for you. That is totally bubble free. <laughs> it's good stuff, this Platinum 360 Plus, isn't it? Bubble free. There we go. All right, turn my little torch off. Sit there. Oh my gosh, this is the nerve wracking part. Okay. Um, are you still with me? You're very quiet. Okay, now I'm not going to put my gloves on for the moment. I just want to, because I want to be able to move and not get caught up with gloves that are too big. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the surface of the mold. I'm going to spray the surface of my plastic and hopefully that will just break the surface tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push into the middle and then kind of push to the outside slowly 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 to the edges i'm gonna to have to cut there because it's doing a whoopty whoopy thing I didn't want to cut like the whole oh, I've got ink on that scissors. I didn't want to cut the whole shape of the heart because as I as I scrunch, um, I'm going to use more of the plastic. So, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pushing lightly. So there's one bubble there, which I'll be able to get out. So basically, I want the plastic to touch the edges. If you get a bubble like that, just lift it up, give it a squirt, push it back down. Now this is thicker plastic than what I would normally, actually I'm not going to worry about it just yet because I'm going to do all my scrunches. It's, it's thicker plastic than what I would normally use. So what I'm going to do just to make it a little bit more easy to easy to use I'm just going to cut around leaving some space some scrunch space okay because as you scrunch it it's going to be pulled in from the, the outside so you don't want to cut your piece of plastic too thin uh, too too small But yeah, it is thicker than, um, probably wouldn't use Glad Wrap or, you know, Saran Wrap because it's really thin. Um, sometimes it can get stuck in your resin. Like if you do like a really deep scrunch, it can get actually stuck in there. So, I don't even know if this is going to scrunch. <laughs> yeah, come on, scrunch. Scrunch. 
It just wants to spread back out again. Oh my gosh. See, this is what can happen if it's, um, like if your piece of plastic is too thick, it doesn't want to, to scrunch. I have to wait until my resin's a little bit thicker. Actually, I'm going to cut it a little bit more and see if I can actually get the edges to go into the mould. It's maybe a, like a centimetre. I'm not going very straight here, am I? I need someone to hold it for me. So I actually want the the plastic to go down into the into the mold if possible. But I just need it to be that little bit bigger than the mold so it can go in there. I don't know if it's going to work or not, you guys. Like I said, it's thicker plastic to what I'm, I usually use. <clears throat> but yeah, if you find a bubble, just, just lift up and give it a squirt. You can see that it's not touching the edges all the way around there. So I think what I'm going to have to do is come back. When the resin's a little bit thicker, so that my scrunches will will stay. All right, <clears throat> uh, maybe oh, fifteen minutes, because at the moment it's just too runny and watery to hold the shape. So I'm going to come back in about fifteen minutes. So see you then. Right, so it's been an extra ten minutes. It's starting to feel warm and it's see how it's kind of staying scrunched a bit more now so what I want to do now is I want to get I want to scrunch it so that the edges of the plastic are inside the mold okay so here we go and that will keep I'm hoping that by doing this I'm just going to concentrate on one section at a time I may have to leave it a little bit longer. We'll see how we go. But I'm, I'm hoping that having the plastic inside the mould will stop it from like flinging back out again. Now I did put a couple of little incisions in. One in the centre there, one there, one there, one there. Just so that it, you know, the plastic could bend, obviously. So it could bend around the curves there. That bit doesn't want to go down totally so that's fine like if it doesn't want to that's fine. But I'll get as much into the mold now as I can. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. So I would say don't don't make your plastic too too big and don't make it too small probably that much bigger than your mold all the way around and we'll just do a little bit at a time just take your time it's a bit fiddly it's a bit messy and then where I've tr in like made the little cut there those two will just kind of fold over each other those two pieces. Please stop jumping out of the mould, you. Stay in there where I've told you to stay, please. <laughs> okay, that look, that's that half's looking good. If it just stays there now, but you can see how the thicker resin uh, will work better for this. I think so, anyway. But. You guys can try it for yourselves. I'm trying to 
and get it to stay in there. <laughs> Now, I know I've got resin on my fingers, but I'm going to wash them with alcohol as soon as I'm done. And this resin doesn't affect my skin like other resins do. Other resins give me a rash. This one doesn't. So, I'm okay with that. Is that a bubble? No. All right. Now, I've got a wet wipe here. I'll just give my hands a, a bit of a wipe. It's looking good. I'm going to just trim that. That piece doesn't want to go in. It's okay. There's a bubble under that one. Now, of course, you don't need to use your fingers, of course. I just like to be able to feel what I'm doing. You can use... um. a silicone stick to push it in you could use, use that so I'm not worried about if I get little folds and things um, like when the resin the plastic folds over itself or something like that I, I don't think it's going to matter if there's any pieces left that are stuck over the edge later I'll just snip them off. It's not going to be a drama. Just try and get it the shape that you want it. You're not going to see the edges once we're done. Now you, you might want to paint the edges with some gold or some silver or top coat it. All right, I'm going to leave it for another five minutes. Um, and just wait for the resin to thicken up a tiny bit more before I do my final. Clean those hands. And then I'm going to go and wash them with hot soapy water as well. So I'm going to come back in about five minutes and see how it's looking. Um, and just scrunch it a little bit more as the resin thickens, okay? All right, so I've had just a little play with it, just as it was thickening. And um, yeah, just got kind of the shape that I wanted. Now, you must remember that with this particular um, plastic, it's not coming out, okay? It's staying in the mold. That's the main thing. It is staying in the mold. We're not gonna take it out and then dust it with chameleon cover it with resin again it's staying in here so if you get some resin over the top um, it, it doesn't matter okay so just get it the shape that you want it doesn't matter if it's gone up the sides a little bit um, the only thing I would say is just be careful that you haven't got any pieces like too high because if, if we decide to go, well, we as in me, <laughs> us, we'll do it together. If I decide to go ahead and put a top coat on, um, which I, I probably will, just a clear one. Um, so it's smooth on the top, smooth on the bottom. But when you hold it up, you'll get this gorgeous iridescent shimmer to it. Um, you, you just want to make sure that none, none of your crushed velvet folds are higher than the edges of the mold okay otherwise they're going to be poking through the top when you do your top coat so try and make sure that they're not too high i can see a tiny little bubble there but i'm, I'm not going to worry about it i think it's just going to be um, too difficult at this stage to get it out because the resin's getting thick now um, and you know what happens with thicker resin it really holds the bubbles all right so probably just going to leave it like that although you know i do like to fiddle but you can see it's holding its shape now. The resin's nice and thick. You can put as many or as few folds in there as you like. Just, yeah, as I said, make sure that your folds aren't too high. Uh, and you can come and 
poke it down and check on it for the next half an hour or so. I'm going to bring you down. Look at that. Wowzers. Look at that. So pretty, isn't it? Poor camera doesn't know what to focus on. <laughs> I'm just going to try and show you the top. It's a bit tricky to do. But yeah, it's looking, looking really good and um, hopefully we'll get different colours and things like that from it as we move it around. All right, it's not picking it up on the camera very well. What I can see in the mould is just incredible. But anyway, it's the best I can do. So um, now we just have to wait until this. If you're going to do a top coat, you can wait until it's touch dry. It doesn't have to be cured because you're not taking it out of the mould. It just has to be touch dry. And then you can go and put another layer over the top just to... Um, you know, make it nice and flat. So um, I'll come back and do that once this is touch dry. See you soon. Righto, I am back. And I've made up about half a cup of resin. Now, if you look across the top, it is it is set, but it's not cured. It's not hard. So if you if you leave it like this um, and then come and pour on it you can look across the top and if there's a section that you think is a bit high you can just press on it <laughs> these little edges here are a bit high just you can just press on them and the resin will you know drop down a little bit so I guess I won't really know until I I start <laughs> but um, if I do have anything poking up um, it can be the back and it won't matter all right I'm just gonna give it a light spray with my alcohol because there's lots of little dips and things in here and I don't want again I don't want too many bubbly boos pour that in now in case you're wondering why we're leaving the paper in here or the plastic in here is because like I said to you earlier I'm not going to be peeling the paper off and then dusting with mica powders um, and because I want the iridescent effect so if I had to peel the paper off I'd lose that iridescent effect. It's not like holographic um, sheets that are etched. So it leaves the holographic pattern in the resin. This doesn't do this. It's just plastic. So if you peel it off, you're just going to have um, a smooth resin. It's not going to hold any effect. Does that make sense? That's why I'm leaving the plastic in here. It's a bit hard to see if I've gone up to the edges or not because it's so uneven <clears throat> surface is so uneven. So I'm just pushing it. I can see where the resin's touching the sides. Make sure it's touching the sides everywhere. Now I know this is not going to be particularly interesting just with a clear background. But I have got some other sheets and they're different colours. So I'll do more videos on this technique, doing the crushed velvet. Um, it's been so long since I've done crushed velvet, I've forgotten really how to do it. But now that I've, I've done it, <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll use my other iridescent sheets that I've got. Um, and then we'll do different colour backgrounds on them. Why have I got a ring light now? I didn't have a ring light before, did I? Shining on it. Hang on, let me get that out of the way. 
It was fine until I started pouring more resin over the top. Uh, and then um, the reflection of the ring light up there <laughs> reflected onto it. Now I've got a little piece of cellophane sticking out there. I'll just snip that off if I can. But yeah, there'll be little bits to snip off uh, afterwards, which which is fine. It won't matter. Now let's give it a little torch, a light torch. Hopefully it's the resin's up to the top now. I'm looking across the top. Yes, it's full. There's a tiny bit of plastic sticking over the edge there. But again, I'll just snip that off once it's once it's cured. I'll probably put a tiny bit more in. This Platinum 360 Plus domes really nicely. So you can actually go sort of a little bit higher than the sides of the mould when it curves over. All right, so that's that's pretty much it. But yeah, as I was saying before, I've got different coloured um, cellophanes as well as those bags that I showed you. I've got different coloured cellophanes. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'll do some videos with those. Let's take my gloves off. And I'll do different colour backgrounds on them just to see what the the difference is like. So look, that, was, that worked out well. I've got a tiny little bit of resin left. Not much at all. All right, that's it for now. I'll wait till tomorrow and then um, I can unmold this and hopefully it will be really pretty. All right, let's go down and have a little look, hey? See if we can get away from that awful ring light. Have another little look at it. So you kind of get purple that way. And you get up here and you get like a green. Again, it's not, it's not that good through the camera. All right, see you for the unmolding. Righto, guys, this is the exciting part. It's ready. It's the next day, bright and early, 7.15 a.m. I've had my coffee, come straight into the studio <laughs> because I want to see what it looks like. If I can get it out, that is. Because it's got a little bit of... It's got a little bit of overflow, you see, because of the um, the plastic, so that it wants to wants to really stick to the mould. See these little bits here? Why won't you focus now? My gosh! See these little tiny bits, little overflow? They really stick to the mould. There's more there. I'd have to deal with all of these and then come back to you. That's a bit of plastic there that's hanging over. So it will come out, it's just going to take a little while because of all the overflow and I don't want to tear the mould. <laughs> I normally only get like two uses out of these so I'll have to be more careful with it. I'll just loosen it and I'll be right back. Yeah, like I said, I usually only get a couple of uses out of these these cheapy moulds. They, they stick like crazy. But what I do is with my little scalpel, and it's not because I've like overheated it or anything. It only had like a very light torching. They just, they're prone to stick. Very, they just cheap cheap silicone very thin I just have to put my scalpel on the very edge it's because the um, the silicone's gone over the top but I guess to prevent that maybe while it's still wet you could clean off your edges so anyway that's that's done the molds okay I could use it again <laughs> oh. all right here we go I think it's loosened all the way now. Oh. See that bit there where the, the silicone's gone down the side a little bit. I'll 
deal with that later. Let's just get it out. I've got some little bits to file off. All right, here we go. It's out. Yay. Oh, look at the different colors. Because, you know, it had the white background. But now look at it. Wow. So this is going to be, that's going to be the back, I think. I wonder if the other side looks any different. Um, I don't know. Can you see any different? So we're certainly getting like this purpley blue and an aquary green, aren't we? I don't know. I guess you could use it either way. Needs a little bit of a little bit of filing, some edges there, and some little plastic bits that are still sticking up. So I can, I'll, I'll just file those. But what do you think, you guys? Oh, wow, it's so pretty. Now I've got some different coloured papers, um, just to see what it looks like with different colours. Because if I mean, I, I did want a clear like this, and I'll have to hold it up to the the sun a bit later on when um, when it's nice and bright outside it's pretty bubble free I can see there's one tiny little one in there but um, yeah it's pretty bubble free I think right so as I, as I was saying I get distracted easily don't I if you got to the stage and you think oh I prefer a background on it you can put some different colors behind oh wow oh wow look at that as I was saying, <laughs> getting distracted again, you can put some different colours behind and see if you would like to do a top coat. So easy to do. You just have to get a little container or something, turn it over. Actually, that's that's the top. Um, that's the back. And um, you can just do a top coat over the top with black, blue, whatever colour you want, okay? Oh, let's look at this again. Oh, wow. Oh. I love it, I love it, I love it. But so you have the option with the clear to do whatever you want with it. All right, so that was the black. Here's some white. So not as vibrant. It's showing bits of pink, that's about all. And then I've got a pink one. Better than the white. We're showing some pink and a bit of green I mean you can't see it as well as I can but it's really pretty all right and then I've got I've got a yellow Let's see what the yellow looks like oops I've got two under there yellow again not as good the darker colors really seem to work better what have I got oh, I've got some green little circle <laughs> oh that's pretty too isn't it that's on the green some micro bubbles in there you can't see them when it's clear like that it's you can't see them until you put them on a background so that's pretty too sort of showing blue and green not as good as the um the black so far what else have i got i've already done orange i've got some orange orange is pretty too but again it's showing more of the the pink and i've got some dark blue this is my poinsettia shape <laughs> and fit it in there maybe like so okay that looks pretty too I wish you could see the the colors like I can so pretty okay and then lucky last I have a light blue and that no, that just kind of washed it all out, really. So it still looks really pretty like that, just, you know, with the clear, which is what I wanted to do. Um, but you can see the, the background there. So what I want to do now, and as I said to you a bit earlier, I've got these other colours. I'll go and get them. I'll show you. Hang on one sec. Can you come with me? You come with me. Get off my little ladder. Um... Here we go. <laughs> well, look, I might as well show you a few things while I'm here. Still not ready, my, my little studio. The powder room is not ready. There's some molds I made. There's my other molds. Those are ready to go out for shipping. 
I've got a sink, but the powder room there, <laughs> it hasn't got a basin yet. Um, there's more molds, it's my little kitchenette area. More molds. This is where I make my orders. zoom out a little bit so I've, just, I've started stacking my shelves I haven't got a whole lot the top ones there because I can't really reach they've just got some you know of my my products some glitters and the bottom one is just like all my stones and pebbles and things but yeah, I'm still I'm still still packing them I haven't got everything out yet molds not my molds everyone else's molds <laughs> that I bought before I started making molds see they're pretty empty still <laughs> um, but getting there getting there got my TV I can stand there and stir silicone when I'm making my molds um, this I'm just these are things that I've just recently made and I need to find somewhere to put them I'll put them up here because I've got some empty shelves up there still so I'll put them up there See, see, I get sidetracked, don't I? Plastic bags. Ah, this is my this is my iridescent paper kind of drawer. I got a big bag of chopped up iridescent paper, but all kinds of things. Those are the bags that I used. This is, this is a scrunched up one. Um, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Well, this is them. This is them here. The ones I was telling you about. Oops. They're in a plastic they're in a little plastic bag. So I know they all look the same, but they're pretty thin. This is them here. See there's that one. I've got five different ones. I don't know if they're all the same colour. When they came they all had numbers on them, so I'm thinking they're different. They're quite thin. So these are the ones, these are what I'm going to use next time, okay, that's them in there. Oh, what have I got in there? Oh, that's just a junk drawer. <coughs> it's a junk drawer. This one, again, hasn't been filled up yet. That's more junk. I'm still, still going. Oh, it's just decorations. I'm waiting for my bins to go in, my tra trash cans, I think that's what you call them. Hasn't gone in yet. Um, this this is a baby cot like a on its side and um, you can just put little bits of timber in there hello Ella and it's good for you know drying things that's my original old storage shelf there's another couple of dogs down there <laughs> um, some clocks and things and look, I've got a driveway that's done. Yay! <laughs> this is my view <laughs> when I'm doing my videos. My view outside. It's the front yard. <clears throat> See, I'm getting very distracted, aren't I? Micahs. Um, resins. Paints. Canvases. I have two mold making tables in the center of my room that I make my molds on I pour silicone on there's my side window here's <laughs> the sliding door it's my car I'll go outside I can show you the finished driveway actually stay there dogs Here's my finished driveway. Woohoo! <laughs> like that. And then there's the. See, I'm getting very distracted now. I'll show you the bottom driveway down to the granny flat because I don't know that you've seen it yet. This is this is all our front yard. We're on two acres, and it goes down there, and then that's where my daughter Gemma lives down there in the granny flat. So there you go. Yep. <laughs> I wanted to get some kind of sail here to put over the cars. Anyway, that's that's the studio there. <laughs> Hello, doggies. They're going, where did you go, Mum? Where'd you go? <laughs> Alright, come on. Let's go back inside. And then this is just another table here. 
There's my alcohol inks and things. This is mold storage. Mold storage. Mold storage. <laughs> Got lots of molds. Lots of molds. Lots of molds. Lots of molds. Well, there's my big spider mold. <laughs> Lots of moulds. So these are great. These I think they're for tools, but they're great for um for mould storage. Some more jugs. And then this is, as I said earlier, this is my area where I I pack my orders. You guys buy my moulds and I stand here and I make my orders and I've got my plastic bags down there and the envelopes and then I can just grab a mould from whatever you bought and make them up and then they go over here and sit on the, the table waiting for the postie and he comes through the sliding door he just opens the door and he takes all the orders and he send them sends them away all right and then i've got my other two big tables there uh, with all my master molds on top so I'll go through here that's my video section there. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. Got some tools hanging up under there. So yeah, that's what we're up to at the moment. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this one. I'll just leave it like that. But anyway, uh, uh, see, I was getting so distracted. I went to show you the other paper. So I'm going to use that. I don't know if I'll do a heart again. I might do some other shapes. Um, I don't know what it looks like outside. But yeah, I'm going to do, I might do one plain and then one black background to see. Should we go and see what it looks like in the sun actually? What do you think? Let's go. Come with me again. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. I don't know if I want to go back outside again. Oh, no, that doesn't look very good there. That's against the black. Those are those other little things that I did the other day. Certainly looks better against the black background, doesn't it? Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Leave it at that. You're not getting motion sickness, are you? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I better go. I've got more unmolding to do from a different video. All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, I'll see you again real soon for another video and we will continue the Crushed Velvet series but with different iridescent papers. Alright, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.